Writing is not something I enjoy, art is not something I get pleasure from, and writing a book I don't get any credit for seems a little odd, but I thought I would give journaling another go. I have tried journaling before, and I came up with a list of reasons why I didn't want to journal again. I am writing about me, to me, for me, I need to make time for it, I need to remember to do it, and I actually need to write to or type something. Are there good reasons? No. But I didn't say there were going to be good reasons. But before I dive headfirst into journaling again and then probably end up failing, I wanted to do a bit of research. So what actually is journaling? Because journaling to me is very, very similar to writing a diary. So what is the difference between a journal and a diary? Well, the earliest recorded diary is from Marcus Aurelius from the Roman Empire. Then there were diaries from people about business and farming, so some finances or just crops. Then people started planning out entire novels in their daily diaries. And then as we move forwards in history, we get people like Charles Darwin and Frank talking about their experiences their daily experiences in their diary rather than it being much of a business or transactional purpose. And comparing that to journal, the word coming from je, jour, 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 the French word for day, it became the daily newspaper, daily gazette, daily magazine. It was very much specific around a topic or an area that was being published. As you move forwards in time, these published journals became at it became academic journals. So journals were more condensed and more synthesized information around a specific topic or area normally published. Then that got me thinking, what about a log or a log book? And essentially what a log or log book is, it's a journal around a specific area or topic, but a log or log book pays specific attention to the granular details. Now, as Matt Diavella mentioned in his video about his experience journaling, diaries, journaling, log books, or essentially just tracking information. So they are all for tracking information, but a diary is much more of a catch-all thing where you just grab everything and put it in the diary. Whereas a journal is much more specific around a topic or an area, and a log book is very, very particular, particular about the details. As I wanted to start this up, I didn't want to go too granular in the details, so I didn't want a log or a log book, and I didn't want to be catching absolutely everything because that's just going to be overwhelming when I start. So I took the journaling aspect and decided, you know what, I'm going to go into this specific area or topic. But what area or topic is it, and how do I do that? Firstly, I looked at whether I was going to do it analog or digital. Now, I don't like writing, but a lot of people that journal, they do it analog. They like the pens, the paper, lines, the dots, the stickers, the, the arts and crafts that you can do, which is great. And I will say journaling or writing analog style gives you more time to really think about what is what is going on and what you're writing. Having said that though, the digital format gives you the majority that you get with analog. Admittedly, analog is more free flowing and free hand, but digital you have access to the links to any sort of online content and that's a lot of the stuff that I look at. So if I want to go anywhere or think about linking anything, it's much easier on the digital platform and it gives you access to digital features like backlinking or just normal linking or going around different places for search. Now that I know I want to do a digital journaling around a specific topic, what is that topic going to be? You could do a journal about dreams, about travel, about food, about exercise, or about pretty much any other habit. And of course, there is the bullet journal, which essentially is a glorified to-do list. Now, before you, before you start ranting at me in the comment section, when you think about it, a bullet journal has tasks, events, and notes. It just tells you what to do. Yes, you do reflect on different things like you would in any other journal. So once you've done your month, so you have your daily page, you have your monthly page and you go back and move those tasks forwards, it's very much a planning specific journal. Now from my research, most of the benefits people were seeing and people are seeing in the bullet journal is the planning aspect, the getting the big view, the overarching view, the zooming out of what is going on and it's the planning aspect of the bullet journal that a lot of people find the value in. Now if you haven't seen my video, I actually already plan using a lot of my digital tools, so I don't want to do my digital journaling through planning because I've already got that. So that's not going to be my area or topic 
for this journaling exploration. So how do I pick what topic or area it's going to be in? Well, some people were saying that you can have surface journaling or deep thought journaling. And I'm like, great, another question to ask. Do I do surface or deep thought? And then I found Tim Ferriss and his explanation of how he journals. Tim describes himself as a hypographia, I think that's how you say it, and he actually has three different journals for three slightly different purposes. A pocket book for brainstorming, and this was literally to put down all of the crazy ideas. It doesn't matter how out there they are, how weird, unique, nuanced those ideas are, it's just I'm going to put them down in this pocket book, this small pocket book that he carries around, very much like a capture tool. This pocket book also had actions. He put the actions down in the bottom right hand corner, but actions related to some of the big ideas out there and he decides, you know what, out of all these things, this one's actually possible and he decides to make an action from it, very similar to the bullet journal where you're putting actions in place. Then he has morning pages, which he treats as his brain dump. He just dumps all of his thoughts, emotions, feelings, anxious thoughts about, and he puts them all down on a page and he traps them away. This is very similar to the energy journal or the feelings type of journal, potentially that, that diary entry aspect. He puts them down in his morning pages. Then his third journal is the five minute journal, which is very focused. This journal has prompts and cues for, for questions he's going to answer and answer in five minutes. Who would have guessed? He's got morning questions, evening questions, such as things he's grateful for, things that will make this day good, things that could have made this day better, something in the evening. But there are questions that have deliberate focus on them. Now that is all well and good and he does say to keep everything as simple as possible. So again, because I've already got that bullet journal aspect, that planning aspect down, it's something I'm already doing, I decided to take the pocketbook approach. I'm going to brainstorm lots of different ideas and then get actions from them. I'm not going to ignore the other two journals, I'm just going to not focus on them for this experiment. Now I know I'm going to do some digital journaling around a specific brainstorming topic, but how do I go about doing that? And during my research, I heard this. Uh, they wanted to, that's why they started, that's why they bought it, that's why they did it. I mean, the, the whole journal industry is like a bought books that never get written in. And it got me thinking, that is a really good point. Even though I'm not using an analog book, I'm still gonna be using digital pages, which are a book that's going to be unwritten. So how am I actually going to get around that original friction point, that first friction point I had with journaling in the first place? I don't like writing. How am I gonna get around that? My first angle of attack was to see when people did it. Do they do it in the morning or do they do it in the evening? The answer, both. They do it in the morning to get their, their mind free for the day to start. And they do it in the evening to get their mind free to go to sleep. So I'm like, oh great, that didn't help. Some people suggest to do the task that you least want to do in the morning and get it sort of like done and out the way. But the way my mind works is if I don't need to do something, and this is a choice, I'm choosing to do some digital journaling. If I don't need to do it, my brain says you're not gonna do it and I just won't do it. Then I looked at changing up the frequency. Some people were doing it daily. Some people were doing it multiple times in a day. Some doing it in a week, some doing it every year, some doing it when they felt like it, some people doing it in blocks. 10 days of heavy journaling and then 10 days of just nothing. There were just massive, massive inconsistencies when, when people were doing it, but the one consistency was they were being consistent. They were doing it in a regular interval, whether they were doing it daily or whether they were doing these sort of blocks or sections, there was just consistency in there, it's consistency in doing it and balance. There was a balance in what they were doing. So whether that was a good, then a bad review or a long and a short review, there was balance between them, especially with the ideas they were journaling about. Even if it was around a, around a specific topic, they made sure that they expanded in different directions. So it wasn't just talking about one emotion, one feeling, one action, one idea, one project all the time, because that didn't work. They tried to find a balance. So knowing how I have brought other habits into my lifestyle, I decided to do it daily and I assigned a time to it. Now, Tim used a five minute journal. That's not the one that I was going to use. I was gonna use the pocket journal, but the idea of five minutes got me intrigued. What if I just do 
10 minutes of journaling around this brainstorming topic. I do that daily. Great, I've got that sorted, but now I need to try and find some balance. How do I get this into a routine? And lots of people are using routines. They were laying on their bed, they were listening to certain music, they were drinking something or eating something specific because that became their ritual around doing their journaling or their daily diary entry. So I knew I needed to add a little bit of structure to actually get myself to journal, but adding these different environmental things in, I knew were gonna be more friction points. So what other ways can I add structure? And lots of people were using prompts. Now again, this goes back to the five minute journal that Tim was using and lots of other people spoke about, but they were using journal prompts. Maybe that's a list, three things of gratitude, three wins that you've had, or just questions, maybe just a theme of the day or the focus of the day, some sort of prompt prompt to get you started. So it's coming together. I'm going to start digital journaling for 10 minutes a day around a brainstorming topic using a prompt. But where do I get the prompt or cue from? One suggestion I saw that was interesting was you just write the same word over and over and over again until you write something else and you use that as a trigger start. To me, that, that just seems silly, but it was an interesting idea. Then someone said, what about prepping it the day before? And that got me thinking. I already consume a lot of information and I capture a lot of notes from videos, podcasts, articles and things that I read. So instead of turning them into notes and just using those notes in the projects I'm doing, why not turn them into prompts or cues for this digital journal? Now this way I don't need to add anything into my routine because I'm already doing it. I also don't have the same repeated prompts because everything is going to change day by day and something else is that the prompts can be really, really short, they could just be one or two words or just a quote, so they're not necessarily descriptive, which gives me the freedom to brainstorm in lots of different directions, which is where my brain goes, especially in 10 minutes. So apart from actually writing, what was the other friction point that I had? Reflection. It was looking back on what it was, and that requires me reading it. All of the journals tracked something, and then you looked at it. You read that information, and you made an action from that but I don't like reading, so how do I get around that? Light bulb moment. I like watching and listening to things, so why don't I just record it? Now this actually solved more than one problem. I don't like writing, so I can just speak. I don't like reading, so I can listen to it. My words come out my mouth much quicker than they do on my hands when I'm typing it, if it's digital, or if I'm writing. I can speak much quicker than I can write. And the most important thing, which I didn't really realize until I thought about it, was when I'm writing, persuading, putting emotions and feelings across about how I actually feel about that thing, that topic, that idea, is very difficult to do in writing. In a couple of weeks time, when I'm reading words off a page, it's very hard to mimic or recreate those feelings that I was having when I was writing it in the first place. When I'm recording myself, you can feel the passion. I can feel the passion when I'm talking about something I'm interested in. You can see my body, you can see the body language, you can hear the tonality of my voice, and then when I'm not interested in something, you could see the same thing. You'd see a dull, boring individual just moping at a camera. Well, I would see it anyway, but I would be able to see the emotion and feel the emotion of whatever it is I'm writing about rather than just reading words off a page. So I went through that process of how I'm actually going to journal 50 days ago today, because I've been journaling now for 50 days in a row, which I never thought I'd say I'd do. So all of the capture points I was getting from the internet, I was using them as cues or prompts for my squirrel sessions, my brainstorming sessions, for 10 minute conversations with myself to the camera, just talking about that topic, that one area. It actually started out as two or three cues or prompts for the 10 minutes, and then it dwindled down to just one, and now I can start talking for 10 minutes on one or two words. And something else that started to evolve over time was I actually started question storming. So those emotions, those feelings, those anxious thoughts I was having or those random questions I was having uh, about different things that Tim was putting in his morning pages, I, w I was actually just question storming things. Now I have kind of borrowed slash stolen that term from Michelle B for those that are curious, um, but the idea of just having a look at this question, this emotion, this this feeling, this thought for 30 seconds or a minute was actually really useful. I was question storming these things for a minute video. It was a 10 minute squirrel session and a one minute video. This was getting literally everything out of my head, everything on paper into words and I could articulate things and brainstorm things without forgetting anything. So that fofi, that fear of forgetting information just 
disappeared. I didn't think I was going to forget anything because I would capture it, it would go into my cues and prompts, I would squirrel about it for 10 minutes, I would then potentially do some question storming for 30 seconds or a minute, and then with the review process, so I was looking at all of these videos, and I'm still looking at all of these videos at the end of the week, so I would look at these things at times two speed, of course, has to be times two. And I was reflecting on all of these different things. And most of the time when I was looking at the squirrels, I was looking at the question storming. I was getting more cues, getting more prompts for more squirrels, for more question storming. And what ended up happening was a lot of these things that I was just brainstorming all over the place actually became condensed pieces of information and I could start linking different pieces of research, creating synthesis and actually building up a video, a deep dive video idea on these different brainstorming topics. And this this what was random brainstorm squirrel moment thoughts became an action, became a purposeful thing that I could do something about. So why journal? Does it actually do what people say it does? Yes, if you do it in a way that works for you. For me, video actually helped me do a lot of the things that they were doing in the journaling. So it did help reduce stress, reduce anxiety. I have been doing it for 50 days now and it is fun. It's something I look forward to, which I never thought would happen when it comes to journaling. I look forward to talking to myself about myself for me. And some of the other aspects of journaling that I just disregarded at the beginning of the experiment when thinking about talking about my day, looking at gratitude, looking at emotions and feelings and all those things that people did journal about have actually started creeping into my squirrel sessions unintentionally. I just bring up different films, different topics, different thoughts that have happened in my day while I'm talking, while I'm brainstorming about this idea and I start linking my story, linking my experience, linking my days with my brainstorming, with my ideas. So I'm actually doing more emotional journaling as well as practical, productive journaling as well. And I imagine moving into the future, I may expand that 10 minutes to 15 to 20 and start talking about more things other than just ideas and brainstorming and start thinking about some other reflective thought because I'm having a conversation with myself. Now, if you're nosy and interested in what my squirrel moments and question storming looks like, my question storming is public over on TikTok where you can engage in the conversation and start brainstorming some of those questions because God, those questions are weird. And the squirrel moments are all on my Patreon, which I will link in the description below. The biggest limitation with video journaling is you need a quiet house or you need people not to be in the house so you feel safe enough for you to talk about it. But that's a whole nother topic.